How the fuck did I end up in this situation? Stuck, lying here with my arm on the other side of this quite literally bloody room, wondering when they're gonna come back. Hopefully, this time, they'll finish me off. Rewind about four days, I think. It's hard to keep time in here with only one window and constant blackouts. I wasn't able to get picked up from school and my car was being repaired, so I had to take the hour-long walk back home. Year 12 was almost over. About five weeks. I was so close to graduating. I was about three or four blocks away from home when I saw a four or five year old kid run out of his drive holding a little bright orange scooter. I walked past him thinking nothing of it when I saw a car come out of the same driveway. Odd, who would be leaving the same house as an unattended kid is leaving to go scootering? Were these parents just neglectful? Nah, maybe uh, only a relative was leaving her or something. I was adamant there was nothing I needed to get involved in, so I paid it no mind. I continued walking for about a minute when I felt the metal scooter slam into the back of my legs. I fell down and let out more swears than I would like to admit when there was a kid around. But instead of hearing anything like sorry or oops, I felt another whack from the scooter, harder, over the head. The last sound I remember were the screeching tires. Not the tired of a worried passerby, though. No. Far from it. I woke up, tied to a cold steel table. There I saw a figure, somewhere in my blurred vision. Despite my position and what was happening, I still had to be a smart ass. It's how I cope with this sort of thing. Yeah, a steel table. In a little cliche. No answer. Come on, Smiley, what's the matter? You want me to scream? You shan't hurt a bit, was all it said. And with that, no noise. Just a feeling of cold, sharp metal cut my arm. I wasn't much of a smartass after that. He continued to cut my arm with seemingly random wild stabs. No rhyme or reason to the way he cut. Just to torture. Only after I regained consciousness from the first blackout did it continue. It cut my arm from the bottom of my shoulder blade, hacking away at the bone with a scalpel, like butter knife through a tough piece of steak. The pain was overwhelming. I couldn't even focus on my own screams, just the pain, the searing and burning feeling as he cut through bone. My bone. When it was done, just as insult to injury, he lightly slapped me in the face with my own severed arm. I was left alone in that room for what I assume was two days to weep, too weak from blood loss to do anything else. Having fun in there? I heard a voice say, not in the room, over some sort of PA system. I laughed weakly. <laughs> Still better than having to worry about final exams. I croaked out, trying to gain my composure for my newly discovered audience. <laughs> yes, indeed. You don't have to worry about exams anymore. And that was it. Until that night. He came back, forcing water down my throat. I choked as the water went up my fucking nose. Oi! Careful with that thing, will ya? Yes. Please just shut up now. It was all it said except for one sentence. Seconds before the scalpel once again hit my flesh. The shot hurt a bit. That searing, jarring pain returned once more but not to my stub of an arm, this time my leg on the opposite side of my body. I couldn't bear even the thought of going through that pain again, but here I was, experiencing it all over again. Once the limb was detached, I unwillingly kicked myself in the eye and was left until morning. In the morning, on what I assume is day four, I was shaken by the figure. For the first time in four days, my vision wasn't blurry. A man, looking to be in his fifties or sixties, was beside me. Let's go. That voice. The same one I heard before. What now? I once again barely croaked out. Ah, so you lived. Good. He grabbed me and carried me down a long hallway. I couldn't help but notice all the portraits hanging up, as some were very old. But everyone was in an identical frame. Sir Walter Blacksmith, 1412-1451. to 1451. Sir Francis Hubris, 
1451 to 1496, Sir Matthew Arnold 1496 to 1529. This went on all the way down to recent years. Dr. Stephen Marcus 1943 to 1978. Dr. Paul Smith, 1978 to 2014. Finally, I noticed the last frame. No picture, just a description. Dr. Aaron Farthing, 2014 to blank. Aaron Farthing, that's me. I was so perplexed I didn't even realize that none of these men seemed to live to 50, even in the recent portraits. We continued down the hall where I saw rooms with giant glass panes that showcased someone tied down to a metal table in each room. One man was missing his eyes, another his ears, a woman in the adjacent room had lost her tongue and legs, this went on for ages, the first ones were screaming but the next few were not, and as we kept going the bodies were more decayed, on and on until we got to room 499, with a body nothing more than a skeleton. Patient 500, congratulations. You get to take over. You are next in line. What the fuck are you talking about? What is all this sick shit? I have killed 499 people. Once I clear out my victims, I can finally die. Thank you, Aaron. I was stunned beyond words. I couldn't make heads or tails of anything he just said. You see... You must fill each and every one of these rooms with a body, uniquely tortured before you turn 50 or else. He trailed off. What? Or else what? What's even going on? I couldn't figure out what to focus on, it was too much to take in. If you live to 50, you become the final patience. You are not allowed to die until every single synapse in your brain is individually severed. Do you know how many synapses are in your brain, Aaron? I... no. About a hundred trillion, Aaron. You must lay there and endure a hundred trillion microcuts until your body just collapses. That must be medically impossible. Not for people like us, Aaron. Like who? What is this place? This is where you live now, Aaron. We are the ones that put the balance of the world back in order. Without us, the world would go into anarchy. And with that, he left me in this chair, at the end of the corridor, with more questions than answers. I blacked out one last time. So, here I lay, a prosthetic arm, prosthetic leg, and 499 rooms to fill with people before I am 50 years old. I noticed a name tag on my desk that seemed to answer a lot of my questions. Maybe it'll answer yours too, but for now... I need to hunt for someone. Someone I can see who isn't abiding by our rules. Stealing, bullying, anything even trivial like stepping on a crack makes you a blip on my radar. I took a look at the portraits and realized something. The first man had no arm, a sort of wooden stump, cupped around his stump of a right leg. The next man quite the same and as the portraits go on the prosthetics seem to look a little more advanced. I'm unsure what this means right now, but I assure you more information will come up once I know anything, but for now, I have no choice. I sit here, in my office, my new name on my desk, mocking me until death, when I may become Aaron Farthing once again. Here is the office of me. Karma. If I could just turn back time, before I ran over that old man before... I got drunk behind the wheel and cost that man an arm and a leg. <laughs> but hey, <laughs> I guess that's karma, huh? Don't worry, this shan't hurt a bit.